What you see now is a simple 2D character creator that I've put together for anyone searching for help. This can be expanded to fit whatever game you're working on. As you can see, the player can select any combination they choose and then click play to begin their adventure. You see a little person here appear in the game world. Here in the overworld scene, I also included a little mini version of the character creator to show how all the animations can be updated in real time. This might be useful for anyone who's working on an inventory system with equipable armor or something like that. For the project files, you can find a link to the full Unity project on GitHub down in the video's description. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you as soon as possible. To keep this video organized, I broke it down into the seven steps you see on your screen now. We'll briefly cover each of these and check off each step as we complete it. First, all your body parts need to be animated separately. If you take a look at this resources folder down in the project window, you can see there's a folder for each body part. Inside of each of these folders are all the animations that are related to the body part. For example, these body animations only animate the naked body here. You can see if I click on like the walk animation, it just has the naked body walking with no clothes on. Likewise, these hair animations only update the character's hair. Once you have all your default animations set up, I found the easiest way to sync up all your animations is to create a parent object for your player and attach an animator to it that's gonna drive all the animations and then have each body part have its own game object and all you have in that game object is a sprite renderer. Then over in the animator, you're gonna create four different layers or however many layers that match up with the body parts that you're trying to work on. So I have body, hair, torso, legs that just match up with the body, hair, torso, legs over here. And then set each of these layers to additive blending mode and make sure the weight is set to one. If we take a quick look at our hair layer here and go into the idle blend tree and left click on it, you can see it's set up with a blend type of 2D simple directional. And then each of our default idle animations, our hair zero are set up right here. One for down, right, left, and up. This same exact setup can be found in my hair walk blend tree and then all my trees in every single layer. Now you're welcome to set up your blend trees in whatever way works best for your game. Just be sure to have all your default layered animations working before you try to start swapping anything out. Next, after you have all your default animations working, you'll need a way to quickly reference animations for other body parts. For this, I use scriptable objects to store the data on all animations related to each body part. So if I just left click on my first option here, this body zero I created, you can see every animation that's associated with body zero is connected in this scriptable object called body part. I also create and store an integer ID number right here for each body part. And this just makes the body parts easy to reference in code. In addition to this body part scriptable object, I also created a scriptable object that holds all the currently selected body parts. This character body scriptable object here kind of acts like a dynamic blueprint for how the character should look and gets referenced by the code whenever a change is made to the character's body. Speaking of the code, you can see I've got a folder for scripts. The more important stuff here is in the character creator folder. And I broke out the scriptable objects we just talked about. So this body part and this character body in their own folder. But the meat of what's driving the solution was this body parts manager and body parts selector scripts. If I first start with this body part selector script, I'll left click and open it up so we can take a quick look at it. I'll scroll in just to make sure everyone can see what's going on here. You'll notice right away we have a reference to our scriptable object character body. This is what gets updated right before changing any of the actual animations our player sees in the game. I'll show you where those animations are updated next, but to update the character body selections, I just added a class down below that you can see here called body part selection. This just groups each set of body part options. I take this class and use it to create an array variable called body part selections. And in the Unity editor, we just create a selection for each body part we're trying to make. So I'll show you what that looks like. Over in Unity, you can see this body part selections and I added one for body, one for hair, one for torso, and one for legs. Each one of those has that scriptable object we saw a second ago 
that has all the animations associated to it. Back in our script, you can see in the start method that we loop through all of the current possible body parts. Then anytime the player hits the next or previous body part option, the associated part index is updated and it sends all that info to update the current body part, which is down here in this method called update. And that's where it's actually taking the information and pushing all that information to the character body scriptable object. Back in Unity, go into this body part manager script next. Inside our body parts manager script, we can see the same character body is referenced here. And we'll see where that's used in a minute. But below this variable are three string arrays. These string arrays are just used to look up all the animation states and directions for each body part type. If I go back into the Unity editor and I left click on my player again, you can see it has the body parts manager script. And here are those three string arrays that we saw a second ago in the script. Each of these just lists however many body part types you want. These are the two states I have, idle and walk, and then finally the direction. The naming does matter. It needs to sync up with your animation naming convention, whatever that may be. Back in the script, I'll come back to that naming convention thing I just mentioned in a moment, but if we look down here, we can see below our string arrays that you'll notice we reference our animator along with an animation clip, an animator override controller, and a class I pulled straight from Unity's documentation called animation clip overrides. You can see that class is created right down here. I'll put a link down in the description for where I got this. If we go up here in our start method, you can see we connect the override controller with our animator and then essentially replace it so that our override controller has full control at runtime. Next, we create a list of all the default animations found in our animator and store it in our animation clip overrides variable. At this point, the player really doesn't see any changes visually. It isn't until we call in this update body parts method that we finally see things starting to happen visually in the game. If we take a look at our update body parts method, we can see that it loops through all of our different body parts, states, and directions to pull together all the relevant animations. A minute ago when I was talking about naming conventions, it's important right here to note that your animation naming convention needs to match up exactly with the string you're using here. In this project, I used type, so body part type, the index of that body part type that's selected, the state, and then the direction. But you're absolutely welcome to change this to match your own animation naming. The one thing I found necessary for this to work, regardless of naming, is to keep all your animations in a folder named resources. There might be other ways to reference your project's folders, but this was the cleanest option I could find. After the list is updated, all that's left is to apply this new list of animations via the animator override controller. And that's about it. If you like this video, let me know by tapping that little like button down below. And as always, please leave any comments or questions in this section below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.